Hey folks, C Squared here. Last week I shot a short promotional video for a small business and I wanted to share a little bit about that experience with you here today. So my friend Daniel, whom you may know from some of the drone videos on this channel, he owns a motorcycle repair shop here in the Atlanta area and we wanted to do a video that would introduce the people who work at the shop and their personalities and some of the story of the shop plus uh, some of the stuff about what they specialize in there. So I wanted to do this in a documentary style and that's something I'm trying to pursue a little bit right now so it was kind of good timing to work on this. So this experience turned out to be very educational for me right out of the gate. Uh, a lot of things kind of went as planned but then there are a lot of things that I had to kind of learn by just having done it. So I just wanted to share some of that with you and uh, just kind of bring you through this process with me and uh, there's a lot of things that I want to get better at and a lot of things I want to remember for next time and refine I'm gonna talk about a lot of that at the end after we look at the video and I'll also tell you what the equipment was that I use and all that kind of stuff so uh, just to set it up at the very beginning there's an establishing shot of the the building for the shop and that just starts with a little tilt with the uh, camera on the tripod and the music that comes in is kind of a rock feel I wanted that sort of coming in and out throughout the video at different times and I wanted that energy of kind of a rock soundtrack uh, so I used something that I had, it was a jam track that I had made for uh, my guitar channel on YouTube and it's uh, kind of in a bit of a deep purple kind of a style but there's no melody and no vocals or anything so I didn't want anything distracting from the story that was going on in the shop so this was actually kind of a good little piece of music that I already had. So let's roll it and see what's going on in this thing. So I ended up using just the regular uh, titles that Final Cut Pro comes with. I want to do something a little more customized in the future. Now these clips of Daniel at the beginning, it's just kind of a fortunate thing about the position of this shop where the sun is in a really nice position uh, early in the afternoons to get a pretty good shot of him talking at the very beginning. It was pretty bright out there, but it came out looking good. Now we get into the interviews here. This was just a single light setup uh, facing off to the side of Daniel. Uh, the rest of it's just kind of the uh, ambient light in the room. And he's sitting next to his uh, one of his personal bikes that actually happened to be on the lift there next to him. So that actually plays into the story later on. Now the questions that I asked in this to try to prompt the interviews, I, I wanted to kind of get the same sorts of stories from each guy so I asked each one of them about how the, they got into motorcycle repair and what they liked about motorcycles in the first place as kids and then uh, sort of the story of how they got this shop open so they each one kind of ties in each other and it made it where I could edit it and go back and forth between each guy as they're talking about it. Now I had this clip of Brian working on the bike and then it kind of comes in leads into the first part of his interview. I looked in the phone book and right down the street was a motorcycle repair school and I went to it and been working on motorcycles ever since. I always had a passion for motorcycles from me when I was a kid, dirt bikes and then onto street bikes. Mom threatened to throw me out the house if I came home with one and I came home with one. So Brian's dry sense of humor is really good for uh, kind of offsetting some of the business talk in this. a pretty big opening for somebody else. So I well, there I use that little whip pan from the mirror to the bikes to uh, kind of abstractly express him saying when there was an opening and then somebody else. You know, I have 25 years in the motorcycle industry. He's got 30 something years in the motorcycle industry. We talk about Fortunately, that clip of Brian was pretty long, so I was able to chop it up and just whenever he was mentioned, I could drop it in have uh, basically dealership quality because I'm factory trained and certified at a discount price and something that's a more personal experience, uh, a one-on-one. -on -one. We're building this. Now here I tried to use a clip that had the customer driving off behind Brian because he was talking about the one-on-one -on -one experience with the customer. The philosophy of this business and being owner with Dan and it's just and happen to have this b-roll clip Dan's of them where Brian's behind Daniel in that view whenever he I mentioned really Daniel it worked out well 
So my name is Anthony Smith. I live in Winder. I've been on motorcycles since I was a kid. At my earliest childhood memories is going to school on the back of my dad's uh, BMW R100. Uh -huh. Happen to have several good clips of Anthony riding the bikes to kind of lead in and out of his interview segments. So I went to Georgia Piedmont Technical College for motorcycle service technology. And I had a lot uh, of video of him, his hands working on the bikes to use. There for a couple years. Then me and Dan went and worked at uh, the uh, ophthalmic. Equipment. There's a lot of hard cuts in the interviews. I would like to have been able to cover more of those, but uh, that's something that I learned is that not only do you need a lot of B-roll, you need more variety of B-roll than you might expect. So in the future, I'll be capturing a lot more of it, uh, a lot more different types of B-roll shots to try and be able to cover those hard cuts in the interviews. I grew up in a small town of West Virginia where a lot of people had motorcycles. It was probably my older brother that got me into motorcycles. He had motorcycles and, and um, yeah, naturally you're just drawn to it. So when he wasn't home, I would steal his and go out and take it for a ride. So and, I happen uh, to have this clip of, that's kind of, where it started. of Daniel probably driving this bike, motorcycle. test driving this bike in the parking lot. But, uh, and that happened to be kind of a good little circumstance yeah, when I he mentioned that he would basically steal his brother's bike and ride it. So I had these clips to put in and they don't show Daniel's face. So it's kind of cool in a way. It's this sort of abstract uh, feel of it's mysterious because he stole the bike, even though he's just actually riding, test driving one of the bikes they were repairing. Uh, my first motorcycle was now here he's talking about the bike that's sitting on the lift really next to him. Got me in love with so I had to get and some B-roll of that bike to dress this clip up. It, get it back on the road. It's just about ready, but this is the bike that got me into motorcycles so long ago. The draw of motorcycles for me was the feeling of freedom. Leaving work after a long day and, and driving home and, and passing a road and just wondering where that road went and taking that road. I've ended up in a different state from time to time, just not knowing where I was going until I stop and buy a map. I don't know if anybody remembers those maps. Buy a map and, and figure out how to get home. Or Brian's get home dry home sense of thing. humor again. But it's just always been that, it's such a relaxing, free-spirited thing and besides, everybody thinks you look cool on one. The best part about motorcycles is just the wind going by and just the freedom of the curves. Working on them, it's just so it makes sense to do something you enjoy. I'll do my best to make sure that they have a safe and enjoyable ride. So it's good to have a B-roll clip of working on the bike when he mentioned working and then one of riding while he was riding the bike. The big dealerships now, they're kind of sterile. So when he mentioned we big today. dealerships, we wanted place I wanted to show the Darth Vader, Vader and yeah, then here, move to the sign the for their yeah. shop when he mentions how they want to be more uh, fun and pleasant. motorcycles should be fun. And that's kind of what we want here. You know, we want to do good work and we want to charge a fair price, but we want you to enjoy your bike. And our whole job is to make sure that you can ride it and enjoy it as much as possible. So the one thing that we do offer is like the big dealership quality at a reasonable price. So I wanted to be able to catch that really good little uh, summary of what they're about right before we go to we the We hope end. you'll stop by and see us. And here at the end is just a bit of a montage of some of the bikes that are there being repaired and maintained. All right, so right away, one of the most important things I learned is that you can never have too much B-roll and you can certainly never have too much variety of B-roll. Uh, it helps to listen to the interviews uh, when you shoot something like this and then try and make sure you've got B-roll that reflects some of what they're talking about. 
Um, and then just make sure you've got probably uh, 10 times more of every kind of shot that you want than you think you'll need. Um, now I shot a lot of that B-roll in 60 frames per second so I could slow it down. And that does give you some flexibility because uh, it works better to end up speeding that back up if you need to than it does to try and slow down uh, something that's 24 frames per second because you just don't have anywhere to go with it. So one thing I want to do in the future is guide the interviews a little bit better. I think in this case I had some good ideas about generally what I wanted to do, but maybe I wasn't quite specific enough because it made it a little bit of a challenge to edit it and go back and forth between the three different guys and what they were talking about. They didn't really have enough places to kind of tie one conversation to the next. So I think that's something I'll I'll be focusing on in the future. So one technical improvement I'd like to make in the future is to match the cameras a little more closely before I start shooting. Uh, they were manageable, but it took a little more fooling around with them to try and get the clips to look right between the ground cameras and the drone. Uh, so in the future, I think I'll spend a little more time making sure that everything is kind of on point with white balance and all that and the colors. For most of it, the audio wasn't much of a problem because I was able to get the shot pretty quiet. But the very first interview that I shot was uh, Daniel's interview and I felt a little weird telling those guys to turn off everything that was in there uh, so we could get clean audio. Um, there was a fan running in the background, and you can see it behind the interview with Daniel. And I was able to pull it down with noise reduction and make it work, but it would have been a lot better to have just turned it off. And as it turns out, the guys were actually cool with, with turning off everything so that we could do the interviews, and I uh, just should have asked about that before I shot that clip. So in the future, I think if there's more distracting noise than, than I would like, I'm at least going to ask. They can say no, and that's fine, and I'll work around it. But it would have been good to just go ahead and ask and get that fan turned off. And that would have been something that would have made that audio cleaner to start with. Now, I mentioned this at the start. The titles that, that are in there are just straight from Final Cut Pro, uh, just the templates that you get in there. And I just used that because I was trying to get this done and it was already taking a long time to edit it. But in the future, I definitely want to make my own customized titles. I think that'll make a big difference in the look of things and it'll, it'll personalize my style of video. So that's definitely something I want to do to improve the videos in the future. Now as far as equipment on this video, it was kind of the usual suspects for me. I used the Panasonic GH5, which is what this is right now, the main uh, A camera for me. And I used the 25mm f1.4, which is also what I'm using right now. And I, I use that for all the interview shots. Um, for most of the B-roll, I use the uh, same camera, but I use the 12 to 35 f2.8. Uh, because that way I got that dual image stabilization and a little bit of flexibility in the framing. There were a few places where I used a 42.5 f1.7 uh, for a little bit more of a longer uh, reach. Now I also used the G85 at one point uh, when the GH5 was locked down and ready for shooting interviews and I wanted to grab some quick b-roll while we already had it set up for the interviews. Uh, the GH5 was already locked down. So that was kind of handy to be able to grab that. So I did use the G85 just a little bit. Um, but it was mostly the GH5 and I used the Manfrotto tripod with the fluid head on it for the pans and tilts. Uh, as far as the lighting, it was the only light I used on this was the Aperture 672. I used uh, my Phantom 4 Pro version 2 drone for the few little drone clips for establishing shots and so forth. And the microphone was just a Rode VideoMic Pro. In this case, I didn't really want to use the lav mic. I brought it with me, but I didn't want to really tie them down. I think these guys are kind of used to being able to move around freely in that shop, and it seemed like it would make them feel a little confined and restricted if I started wiring them up and I didn't have to. So since I was able to get the shot pretty quiet, it worked pretty well just to bring the, the uh, uh, road mic real close on an extension cable to the camera and just put it just out of frame and I uh, feel like I got pretty good sound that way. So anyway, those are pretty much the things that happened on this first shoot and I hope to get a lot better at this as I go. I feel like it was a good start though. It was really fun to do. If you have done this kind of thing and you've got some tips, I'd definitely love 
love to hear it. So leave those in the comments. Um, and if you've got any questions, I definitely like to hear that too. And I'll do my best to get back to you as quick as I can. So leave that in the comments too. And I really appreciate you watching this. And again, if you wanted to see this video in its sort of pure form, I'll, you know, I put the, uh, uh, link up here again for you to go to that and check it out without having to hear me talk all over it. Thank you for watching. And I will hope to see you again as soon as possible on the next video.